BTC Creole Parametric 3.0, Lesson 12, Part 5. The last portion of this lesson is going to be creating the assembly drawing. We did the sub-assembly drawing previously. So first thing, again, I'd like to do is open up the model, the object that I'm going to use in the drawing. In this case, it's going to be the full assembly. I'm going to close that. And we will start a new drawing. Use the name given to you in the book or one of your own choice. And we're going to go empty with format and we are going to use the one that we created in the first part of the lesson. I'm getting this one with the fill of materials on it again. Keep choosing the wrong one here. So let's try again. Okay, empty with format. Let's browse and see where we are with this. Ah, okay. And I have my full assembly active, therefore it used that as the default model. And it propagated this in such a way that it went down instead of up. So we'll put it over there and you'll see that the full bill of materials has been filled in. So we'll insert our model. layout tab and we are going to go to the general view okay click where we want it to be and let's see get the view that we want make sure that we have lock view unchecked put it at the top here and project it to the front as before let's change the scale to 1.5 So, and we can capture both views and let's put no hidden as the choice. Takes a little while because of the complexity of the threads. And we'll turn off all of our datum features here. And if you remember, we have to go to the annotate and turn off all of our set datums, erase them, cannot delete them. They're features of the part that they're embedded in. And we will go and we will, let's see what we want to do here. Let's manage file, prepare, drawing properties, change, and we will import the DTL file that we want to use. We want to see which one this is in the book. And it's the clamp ASM. Okay. Thought I got it there. Maybe I hit the wrong one. I did. There we go. So we are going to close this. And the views that we're going to use, we got a view in the front here that we're going to probably want to change. And first thing we do is let's uh, select both views and show model annotations. And we have one dimension, but we don't want to use that. And again, I'm kind of funny. I'm not sure why I'm not getting my 
axes created correctly. But the good thing about it, doing it this method one at a time is you're only going to get the ones that you want. And something in the top here too. All right, so and maybe it just took longer than I thought. I think the reason again is that we have all these threads on the from this imported feature was not created in Creo for Pro Engineer. It's from Car Lane. So zoom it all. And let's go to the front view. It should be in the layout tab. And double click and we're going to turn it into a section. 2D sections plus. And I actually have one created here. So I can simply use that. But I think what we'll do is we'll create a new one just to go through the process. Not sure what that means. So we're going to create a new one. And I think I want to turn on my plane. Again, what's going on is even though I've got a good computer, the view is not repainting itself very quickly because of the lines that uh, are necessary for the flange nut and the two studs. So for some reason, I'm not getting it to work very quickly here. Probably going to say that it's non-responsive at this point. So we'll wait a couple of seconds. When you're working with the Creo 3.0, attempt to put your cursor different places on both the model and the drawing. And if you have a little icon show up called the show icon, use your right mouse button and investigate. One of the things I've noticed with Creo 3.0 is there's a lot of hidden changes and capabilities that have been embedded. Okay, so let's see what happens here done. And we'll type in B, even though it really should be A. I've already got a section A. Pick a plane. And again, I'm not getting very uh, very cooperative model here. Basically, I'm wanting to cut one across. I'm doing something. There we go, finally. So I'm going to select the datum plane in the top. Boy, it took a long time. And it looks like it's going to do that every time. One of the things is, if I would have kept it in shaded view, this wouldn't have been going on. OK, so there's my B. And I can apply. And I have my, I'm going to cancel this. And turn off all my data planes. So. That was a little more cumbersome than I wanted it to be. But I finally got my section. It says section BB. Yours is going to be section AA. Again, I already had created it in this particular model. Um, this is creating it in, in the drawing rather than in the model. I usually prefer to create the section in the model. Regardless, the model is where the section resides. In other words, it's embedded in the model. Unlike some CAD systems where the drawing has the section, the section is actually connected to the model in Creo. So basically, we want to go through here and check our section. And we've done this before. So we're going to double click on the section and the old menu manager shows up, which it also did when we were creating the section, if you noticed. And in this case here, we want to start with the flange nut. And let's exclude that. Sometimes it's okay, they say, to exclude a standard feature from sectioning. So we just want to go through a, a variety of choices. Here we would use fill because, again, we're at 90 degrees to a round standard part. And again, follow the steps in the book. Mainly what we're trying to do here is just give some idea of some options that you're going to have. Again, we want to delete the extra line that is steel and we wanted it to be just the standard section lining, not anything to do with the material. 
Well, next. And if we want to change the spacing on here, and maybe the angle a little bit. Done. And I'm not going to go through the rest of them, but you can see what happened here. It excluded it. So you go through and do what it says in the book. Ah, here's an interesting thing. This sometimes happens. And it's not always like this. But if I go over here and I try to display this stud, so I'm going to go to the flange nut here. There's the flange nut. And there's the stud. And you'll see that it's it was not displaying, and I had to click on it to display. Again, this has to do with the resolution of my screen and the capabilities of my graphics card. And this has been actually going on. I have a very good system. This has actually been going on for many, many versions. Um, if you put in just a standard stud uh, and you model it yourself with no threads, then you won't have this problem. And it's, um, it's kind of intermittent also, but regardless. So... The next thing we want to do is we want to go over to our table and create balloons, all. And you'll see they're going to all show up. And then we want to take those balloons and move some of them. Number six here, move it out. Again, it's basically the same thing we've already done before. So that's the clamp ball. So I don't want to go over this too much. And the arrow style that we want it to be, and you want to move it. So you can experiment with that, move your balloons around, your title block and information for the bill of materials has been fit, filled in as per your parameters for each one of the components. And let's go back over to the book. I don't think there's much more except for going into the next sheet and putting a different type of view on there, which is what I want to do. This is new, whereas some of the things that we've done here, we've already included these uh, capabilities in the last lecture. And so it looks like the only thing, if you really want to do that at this point, you can add your arrows. And I want to show you something. If uh, we click on... Uh, Let's click on here and see if we can get a thing. So this would be uh, uh, sections. If you open this up, very long dialogue. You have arrow display way over here. If you click in there, then let's see if it applies it. Surprising how long everything is taking. So in this dialogue, you can also get the add arrows. That's really all I was showing you rather than clicking here and adding the arrows from the convenient right mouse button selection. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a sheet, and we're in the Layout tab. Click on New Sheet, or you can come down to the very left-hand corner of the graphics area, below the graphics area, and click on the plus, and you'll go to sheet number two. And again, you'll see over here you've got all of the title block Select table, select the bill of materials, and then move it to wherever you want it to go. So in this particular case, though, we're going to insert a view, go back to the layout table tab, and we're going to insert a general view, and we'll use the combination that we created from lesson nine, exploded view and style states and orient. Click OK. Click a position where you want it to go. And this is the view. This is the explode state, all of which were created previously. So we're on explode one here. Mirror scale, we'll keep this a section. We won't use one. View states. So got one and two here. I'll see what that one does. That's just a little bit different explode. And we'll leave that one.
And let's go over to table and create balloons to see if it does that. It does not because we've got the balloons on the other one. So we've got the title block here, but not the balloons showing up. You can create those balloons individually. Let's go by view and see what happens here. See, it won't give it to us either. So we can turn off some of the balloons in the other one or, or not use them on the first level and do them on the explode. That would be one way to do it. You can do it by component. Let's see what happens here. You're going to see we're still not getting the selection. So, sorry. Oh. Ah, I apologize. I thought I had selected my area here, but when I moved this, I did not keep the bill of materials selected. But regardless, you can go back and you can insert these balloons individually, but the best way is obviously to just display them like we did. So what happened here is that when you're going to hit create all, you still have to have this field here selected. This is the repeat area that you put in and all the component properties were propagated from the parameters. So Basically, on this here, again, you can go through, and on every one of these, you can change different things. For instance, here's the, uh, you'll notice, if I click here, I get a couple of choices. If I click here at the end, and a little black box shows up, I have arrow, arrow style, so I'll do a fill dot. So, again, move the, move around the, uh, the items if you want, and the ballooning. If we double click on here and we go to I'm going to check all of them, see if I got them. Let's go over here. We actually can go and change, for instance, the view itself. Now it's not a good idea to do too much of this because it's in 2D. It's a little cumbersome to do it, but if you wanted to change an angle of something, I'm just going to go five degrees and it will add five degrees. So I can actually go in here using references and angles and change what this looks like compared to the when I created it and saved it as a combination view state, uh, explode, etc. when I was in the model. Again, I don't like to do this too often. You can see I got a little bit of a, a tweak to it. I'm not saying this is a good thing to do. I'm just saying that's a capability that you do have. All right, so we'll leave it like it is. Uh, the last thing here is, let's go back to our layout tab and go to the group overflow area and on the layout tab and then import a drawing. And in this case, let's import the subassembly. And now on sheet three, we have our subassembly. So. Basically, we have a situation where we've combined sheets, and yes, you could put in detail sheets also um, to make a, a package, let's say. Um, we've got other drawings in here. Uh, how about the lamp drawing? I think we'd have to change our fonts and our sizes, obviously, on that one. All right, so this ends lesson 12.